All right, and all these are equivalent. So now we have another way of talking about it. We can talk about it in light minutes it is a way. Remember, light minutes, even though it has time, is actually a unit of distance. That is how far light will travel in 8.3 light minutes. To give you a perspective here, I have this. I don't, you probably can't read it. In fact, I'm sure you probably can't read it. It says one nanosecond. Now, a nanosecond is a really, really tiny amount of time. A nanosecond is... that much of a second. Now, also this should be reviewed for you, but I want you to know powers of 10. We write this, this is a really tiny number, but we can write this, instead of writing out all the zeros, I'm going to write this as 1 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. So when you see something with a 10, this is called powers of 10 or scientific notation, that power of 10 tells you where, how far this number, whatever the number is in front is, away from the decimal point. If it's negative, it's a very, very small number. If it's positive, it's the other way. So I would write 150 million kilometers over here. I would write this as 1.5 times 10 to the, and I just count how many, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 kilometers. That is the same as that. Now when you read your textbook or you look online, most people write it like this because we don't want to write all the zeros. In astronomy, you get a lot of zeros. So it's much easier to do this. Remember this is a positive number, it's a very big number. Negative number is a very small number. All right, so a nanosecond is one one billionth of a second. And right here, so every second that goes by, there's a billion nanoseconds. This says on it one nanosecond. This is how far light travels in one one billionth of a second. Okay. So I could say that from the length from here to here, if I did this in light units, this is one light nanosecond. And we could use light to measure any distance we wanted to in the whole universe. However, it's not really super convenient until you start to get to really big numbers. But that is how far light goes in one one billionth of a second. All right. Let's talk about the scale of the solar system. Like I was telling you before, that these are not drawn to scale. The distances, the sizes, completely wrong. And most pictures you see do not have the right scale of the solar system. So we're going to do a little experiment here, just to try to put it in perspective. If I make my sun this big, so here's the sun. So I've scaled down the sun by some factor of 40 trillion or something, something really huge to make it that big. So I scaled it down so that it's very, very small, this size right here. The question then is, is how big are the planets relative to that sun? And I have models of them here. Here is Mercury. So Mercury is the closest planet. I'm not sure you can see it, but Mercury is that little tiny bead on top of this stand here that says Mercury. So relative to the Sun, that's how big Mercury is. You can see Mercury is so small, it easily gets lost in the face of the Sun. Yeah. Now, that only tells us the relative size between here and here. We also want to know its relative distance. Mercury, if the Sun's that big, Mercury is going to be 93 feet away. So mostly, that's bigger than, or about the size of an average house. If you put that sun on one side of the house and you put this on the other side of the house, that's where Mercury, the closest planet, would be. So when we draw Mercury close to the sun, that is completely wrong. Mostly it's just empty space and really, really tiny. And we can go up from there. Here is Venus. Venus, no, notice, is bigger than Mercury. You can see those two. But Venus is still, it takes about 100 Venuses to go across the diameter of the Sun. And Venus would be, scale distance, would be at 174 and a half feet. So way much further away, 
most of what you're seeing in our solar system is empty space. Here is the Earth. The Earth, notice, is about the same size as Venus. We call them twins. We have two sets of twin planets in our solar system. So here's Earth. Earth is at a distance of 241 and a half feet away from the, our scale down sun. But we have to think about this. This is the moon. And you, you can probably you can't see the moon at all, but moon is this little tiny bead on top of that. Significantly smaller than the Earth. But to get the moon and Earth in relative, you don't actually have to go that far. Relative to the Earth, the moon is only about that far away. So in our scaled system, if the moon is here, Earth is here, moon is this big, they're about that far away, about eight inches away. So they're fairly close together, moon going around the Earth, like this. Okay? But the Earth and moon, the whole system, is way over in different buildings. They're not even close to us anymore. The next planet after that is Mars. Mars is about half the size of the Earth. Okay? But Mars would be at a distance of 371 and a half feet. Okay? And those are the close planets. These are the terrestrial planets. Notice the small chunks of rock right in here. Now we get to the bigger planets. We get to Jupiter. Here is Jupiter. Notice Jupiter relative to Earth. Okay, Earth, about 12 Earths would fit across the diameter of Jupiter. And Jupiter gets to be a significant size of the Sun. So when we look for exoplanets, planets around other stars, it's easy to find Jupiter ones because as they pass in front of their star, they block out part of the light and it's easy to find them. Really hard to find a planet like Earth passing in front because it blocks out so much, so little light, it's really hard to see it. Jupiter has a very thin ring. It also has four large moons. It actually has 50 or 60 moons, but there's only four really what we call large, significant moons. Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. We'll talk about those in detail later in the planet. But in our scaled solar system, Jupiter would be a quarter of a mile away, or about 1,200 feet away. All right, next comes Saturn. So here is Saturn. Notice that Saturn is only a little bit smaller than Jupiter. Size-wise, there's not a big difference. Saturn is smaller, but also Saturn is much lower density, so Jupiter has a lot more mass than Saturn does. Saturn has this beautiful ring system, which we'll talk about, and it's very nice to have that because it's not always going to be there. We just happen to be at the right time when we can see it. All right, after Saturn comes Uranus. Here is Uranus. Notice that all these planets are significantly bigger than the terrestrial planets. Uranus is at a distance of 0.9 miles, almost a mile away compared to our sun. And here is Neptune, the furthest planet. And Neptune is at 1.4 miles away. Very large. Notice that Neptune and Uranus are also exactly or almost exactly the same size. So we got two sets of twin planets, Venus and Earth and Uranus and Neptune. And I do have Pluto, for those of you that are Pluto fans. Pluto would even be further, it's about 1.8 miles away in our scale. So as you can see it, it's super tiny. It's tinier than our moon. Okay? So it is very, very small, or I should say it's about the same size as our moon. Long ways away. All right, but what I want you to really get out of this whole idea is that most of the solar system is just empty space and then there's these little tiny chunks that are just out in there orbiting the sun, but most of it, 99.999% of the solar system is empty space. When you see these pictures, they are not accurate at all. all right. Now, just for interest, the closest other star to us is Proxima Centauri, which is in the Alpha Centauri system, okay? which is about four light years away. Right. Remember what a light unit is. One light second would be 300,000 kilometers. 
So if you go for all the seconds in a year and multiply that by the speed of light, then you get how far light travels in a year, which is on the order of like 7 trillion miles. And the closest star to us is four of those light years away. So it takes light four years to get from that star to our star. In our scaled down solar system, where the sun is only this big, how close would that star be to us in the scaled system? So we'd have another disk like this, where would it be? Well, if you do the calculations, the closest star system to us would be at a distance of 11,840 miles away, which is about halfway around the Earth. So you'd have another disk halfway around the Earth from the Sun, and that's how far these stars would be away from each other. All right, so relatively speaking, that's how big the solar system is. Keep that in mind throughout the semester.